it begins with like some light bass drum thumping and some asshole that sticks his face in front of the camera for a second. Uh, that's, uh, that's Jules. Oh, you did? Okay, I just thought it was <laughs> It was only a part of his face, so I didn't see yeah, yeah, it. Was Hey everybody out there, welcome back to another episode of The Audio Files. I'm Andy, that's John over there, and we exchange and discuss music here on this channel. So it is John's turn to offer up something for me to go off and listen to, react to, take notes on, and then come back and discuss with him. Uh, but in order to do all of that, as you can imagine, I'm going to need to know the name of the band and the name of the track. So John, would you be so kind as to offer those to me, sir? Okay, something a little different from the channel, as folks who are already watching this know from the title, wherever it is, somewhere around there. Somewhere. I can't remember. Um, so, yeah, this is a band, Faithless. Okay. The track is called Insomnia, and this is a live performance on Later with Jules Holland. Okay. So, of all the shit you just mentioned... Later with Jules Holland is the only thing that I have any familiarity with. That's um, your comfort blanket there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I'm sure it'll be an interesting performance. Probably a very good one because the Jules is known for only having those on his on his show. So um, let me go off, give it a watch, give it a listen, and then I will come back and let you and everyone out there know what I made of it. a lot of people on this stage. Liking all this texture. Even more. One of two things can happen after a drum roll like that. It's either going to explode into something bigger or it's going to retire within itself. And that's sort of what it did, the the latter, not the former. Um, yeah, this has kind of like a, a techno-y kind of house feel to it uh, at this point. Um, I could see this being in like a dance club or something like that, just from what I've heard a minute and a half into this not necessarily my cup of tea but i mean you can't really deny how rich this is in texture with all those different percussions that are being used um to add you know all these touches of sound and and again this richness and texture to the song and then these for the most part resonant kind of keys that are filling out the sound as well um I could definitely see just getting lost in this, um, which is kind of perfect for like <laughs> house clubs or like house music or club music. It's, you know, usually being listened to by dr just drug fueled youths that want to dance the night away. So I could totally see this, uh, 
this fitting the bill. That's a twin. Oh man, there's ch the chimes. Oh. I only smoke weed when I need to, and I need to get some rest. Yo, where's the cess? I confess I burned the hole in the mattress. Yes, yes, it was me. I plead guilty, and at the count of three, I pull back the duvet and make my way to the refrigerator. One dry potato inside, no light, not even bread. Jam when the light above my head went. I can't see something's all over me, greasy insomnia. Please release me and let me dream about making mad love on the heath, tearing off tights with my teeth. But there's no relief. I'm wide awake and in my kitchen. It's black and I'm lonely. Oh, if I could only get some sleep. Creaky noises make my skin creep. I need to get some sleep. I can't. No sleep. My gosh, this is very EDM. I just feel like I've heard that melody before. That, that, that very stabby. Love those percussions. Enjoyed that mostly like no offense to the the fellow singing there but i mean that was mostly just kind of like spoken word beat poetry i mean it matches this and he's even talking about his lack of sleep which i mean the song's name is insomnia and again it i think it kind of fits the the idea of a lack of sleep speaking to uh you know a group of folks who are probably listening to this all night long again out of their gourds on some sort of, you know, mood enhancer. Uh, it all makes sense. Um, but the, for me, the music was what carried the day in this one. Um, some really interesting, like, bass stuff in the beginning, just kind of, like, carrying that. But also, all of these, like, auxiliary percussion instruments, hand drums, the, the drum set proper... All of that added so much beautiful, like texture, like the, the tinkling of the the chimes, um, that little splash symbol that your man on the drums was using. Those hands, just the the clicking and really interesting pitch to all those hand drums that were going on. Loved that, loved that. And then that like earworm of a goddamn melody that's being played on those keys, um, 
was really intoxicating as well. Again, you know, this isn't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of a lot of EDM uh, or like, you know, club music, house music, whatever you want to call it or however you want to describe it. Uh, but this was a lot of fun. I could see this song being played on like a 40 minute loop in a club and people just like zoning out to it. This is kind of cool just to get like a, you know, a small um, taste of it and, and to be able to see it performed live was really interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed this. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Jules pretty good about only bringing good bands <laughs> to provide good performances on a show. Um, and I would say that this is one of them and definitely fits the bill. Yeah. I don't know much about Faithless. Um, I've got more experience with Insomnia uh, than I do this band Faithless. But yeah, I would love to learn more about them and see what John has to say about them. So, let's get back to him. Tyler Lionel Sardis, he's back. So, you had a uh, listen to uh, Insomnia live on Jules later Holland rearrange those words into a sentence by faithless um yeah. what did you make of it all um I, I i of course it was a really fun performance to watch um because as i mentioned it's jules holland uh but yeah this is certainly and i think you kind of alluded to this when you introduced the the episode earlier on the other side where you were like, oh, a little something different for the channel here. This is something different for me, for sure. There's not a lot. I'm not going to say, like, my tastes are impervious to the, um, you know, things that fall under the category of house music or EDM or any of that. Uh, but I am, I don't often, uh, you know, put myself in a position where I'm listening to it a lot. So, as you can imagine, this isn't something that I would normally flock to. But it was all, yeah. You as well as that yeah. way you're using it. Just to say, I'm I'm of the same, I'm of the same boat. Yeah. Um, but having said that, there are some <laughs> songs that sort of surpass their their, their own genres. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's a f I for for a, for a large part couldn't stand the acid house movement. Couldn't stand most of the house music that ripped off what I would call acid jazz and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not my thing at all. But there are some tracks, you know, when there's some artists that just, you know, raise themselves above it. And I would put, you know, things like Chemical Brothers in there yeah. and Project <laughs> and stuff like that. Now, the original version of this was all electronica. And I wouldn't have given you that. And I probably wouldn't yeah. have listened. I mean, I would have listened to it perhaps, but not really enjoyed it. But the, this very performance using organic instruments is what I think raises it to something that makes it very interesting musically. Yes. So that's why I gave it to you. And that is why I enjoyed it. So there you, you were spot on <laughs> in your decision making there. Um, it begins with like some light bass drum thumping and some asshole that sticks his face in front of the camera for a second. Uh -huh. that's, uh, that's Jules. Oh, you did? Okay, I just thought it was... <laughs> it was only a part of his face, so I didn't see yeah, yeah, it. Was like, <laughs> but I thought it was just a goof all the audience, like, hey, Bob. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, it was okay, Jules. Jules could, yeah. could do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's a show. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. Um, so the, the bass drum picks up pace uh, as the camera, thankfully, pans inward to the stage so I can get a better glimpse of the band. And there are a lot of people on that stage. Um, we get some, like resonant synth chords and a shaker that whisks um and i it sound, looks like the the one of the uh musicians is holding what could be a rain stick but i'm not exactly sure yes that's what i that, thought it was as well there's some nice stick. they're really subtle there's nice sort of yeah um, you know, yeah auxiliary percussion you get the, the things later but yeah that is really nice sounds Yes, auxiliary percussion is one of the, like, wordles, if you made a wordle of this, one of the largest, brightest words that would appear generated by this experience would be aux percussions or something like that, you know what I mean? Because that those are so great uh, all throughout this. But there's some really cool bass work happening here as well yeah. um, that, I, that I enjoyed a lot too here in the beginning. And then we get these hand drums that join the mix, and the drummer starts to incorporate his full set into the song. 
um, which now has pace and more rhythm to it. Also, there are like fucking textures abound starting to blossom here. Um, and so all, as all these instruments are coming in, the, it's becoming fuller in sound. And a lot of that texture is coming from the aforementioned auxiliary percussions. All of the friction and the lush cascading sounds and yeah. all of that, like the chime work that you get through, uh, later in the song is all like so great. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Um, the guitar strumming begins to pick up more and more. And this is a perfect example of the, of some more of that texture that I just discussed being injected into the soundscape. And I love how when it comes to a crescendo, the drummer striking his snare in perfect time with the guitarist strums. Um, and I, and I mentioned this in the reaction that that motif, that sort of mechanism of syncing those up usually connotes one of two very different things. It's either about to explode into something or it's about to fall off or into itself. And in this case, it's the latter and not the former. Like it, it falls inward, it sort of collapses on itself. Um, and the song moves like sort of back into the more subdued portion that was built upon uh, in the beginning. And the verse begins and your man with the mic uh, starts to deliver a verse in a very spoken word, uh, sort of beat poet rap adjacent fashion um which is interesting um you know it's not bowling me over with his his vocals like style or or i guess talent but i like the, uh, he's he's rapid firing these words off um about like you know only smoking weed when he needs to and it sounds like he's having a trouble like trying to sleep he rips off the duvet i think makes his way into the kitchen um so he's telling this, he's really narrating his experience uh, about his inability to sleep. Um, again, during this portion, there are some great textural additions uh, with chimes, these ti that tiny little splash symbol that he has mounted on his set. Um, and this light, I think I heard this correctly, but I'm not 100% sure. It sounded like light scratchy kind of bends on the guitar strings um but I, I could i don't think i was looking when i heard it so i couldn't like identify to see what it was um and just as he delivers the line about how he can't uh get no sleep the music cuts out briefly and then the short bit of silence is punct is punctured by the sound of a stabbing keynotes playing this techno like melody uh and holy shit this thing's a fucking earworm man it made me wish that I was on whatever, like, you know, the <laughs> the ketamines, the ecstasies, the whatever is being ingested to make this, to enhance that sound. Because I can only imagine that when this song is played or the when you're under the influence of any of those drugs, what you want to do is hear this song for 30 or 40 minutes straight, just going, just pounding away. Yeah. I'm glad because I was sober that this was, you know, all we got. Uh, but I was just trying to put myself in the shoes of those who gravitate not only to this song, but to the the environment that is best catered for. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I bet when they put this shit on, it lasts at least 15 minutes. Um, so, yeah, the, this motif is built is built on and there's some more excellent percussion work. And the other keyboardist joins in while the singer maintains uh, his his uh, narrative about his inability to get sleep. Uh, and then things kick off and we get this driving full sound that has so much energy to it. But counter to that is this very drowsy delivery of the singer, uh, again, maintaining that he can get no sleep, which makes sense given the name of the track. Uh, the song ends with more of that main key motif that is enhanced by some stellar percussion work uh, before it finally wraps up and comes to its completion. And I can totally see this being a huge hit in the club dance scene, not only in the structure and the sound of the song, but in the lyrics as well, because I would imagine that something all of these people are can relate to is after a hard night of this, it's probably hard to just go and tuck in and fall asleep. You have to, the drugs decide when you're going to bed and, and the, the also probably just the endorphins that you've built up from hanging out with your people all night long, doing what you love to do. 
um, it probably takes a while to come down off of that. So I would imagine that this feeling is probably universal to a lot of the fans of, you know, these like these drug fueled EDM heads that go out and experience this, you know, um, whenever they can. And while I personally have never been a part of that scene, I can say that I really did enjoy a lot of what was going on in the song and this performance. The use of so many varied auxiliary percussion instruments and the drums themselves gave the song this, again, array of texture and sounds. And the key work was just an absolute earworm that wrapped itself around my brain and really didn't let go. And I can imagine that that melody line, that stabby, keyboardy line that i believe the young woman is playing is going to live between my ears for quite some time but yeah i, I really enjoyed this yeah it's something different isn't it um yeah and i do remember the original coming out and as i say not not particularly my thing but that's as you say that uh, keyboard melody, that, that, that that's just isn't an earworm and irrespective oh, yeah. of what your tastes are um yeah so i and I um, stumbled across this performance and, um, yeah, I was absolutely mesmerised by it. I would say for me, all the, te as you say, the textures and everything in it, I mean, the percussion's just superb. I love the drums, the kick in, real drums. It would have been, you know, synthetic drums in the uh, original track. Yeah. I love the, the way they've taken this decision to try and reproduce stuff with a live band that gives it that live energetic sound. Um and yeah, it's just superb. I absolutely adore the guitar, that wah that goes in and out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really, there is that really wicked, cool. wicked, wicked, definitely going on there for sure. And 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 actually, um, the uh, the singer has so much charisma and there's a, there's a story to him as well that's just really cool. So, Insomnia is a song by British music group Faithless. Now, they were formed in 1995, the first album, Reverence, was released in 96. And their most recent, All Blessed, in 2020. They have sold millions upon millions of physical records. And their catalogue was uploaded to streaming sites in 2018. And they average around 3 million listeners a month on Spotify. Um, their records have charted number one in numerous countries all around the world. And they were voted fourth greatest dance Band of all time and mix mag. Oh. So the members are Sister Bliss. Um, that is the uh lady with the short blonde hair. Um, she the band is split between studio work and live work. So she does studio and live work, keyboards, synthesizers, piano, production, arrangement, mixer, composer, programming. Rolo Armstrong, he is a studio only only member. Keyboards, drum machine, guitar, bass, production, arrangement, mixer, composer, programming. Maxi Jazz, lead vocals, guitar, programmer, production. And Jamie Cato, lead and backing vocals, guitar and keyboards. Um, and he was with the band from 95 to 99, so it's in this period. Um, so this, in 95, Rolo Armstrong was with um, Sister Bliss. Um, and they're working together, and he said, oh, I've just met this really interesting guy. He does, he's a Buddhist rapper. Um, so they went along and met uh, Maxi Jazz, um, and then they uh, together formed, um, along with uh, Jamie Kato, Faithless. Um, Maxi Jazz is a Soka Gaika Buddhist. Uh, his strong beliefs, along with the band's own strong individual beliefs, particularly over sort of social, political um movements um mm. contrast with the name faithless it was kind of ironic mm. um and it was chosen during the writing of the song salvamir so insomnia which is the band's second ever single became one of the most successful it was originally released in 95 and reached number 27 in the charts in the uk and topped the uk dance charts it was then re-released a year later in 96 where it got to number three in the mainstream charts and topped the charts in finland and norway and switzerland as well as the American and the Canadian dance charts. Yeah. Our dance charts. And it was voted by Mixed Mag Readers as the fifth greatest dance record of all time and was certified triple platinum Damn. in 2023. Just as a single, that's a whole big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, a lot of people falling into that that earworm of that melody. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So according to uh, Maxi, he spent 20 minutes writing the lyrics after being given a song's title by Rolo Armstrong. 
before finishing them in the studio the following evening. And he laid down the vocal track in about 25 minutes. Although he was not an insomniac, Maxi drew on a personal experience for the lyrics he had recently suffered a painful dental abscess, which kept him awake at night. And the lines about the lights going out in the darkness was based on he had a prepayment um, electricity meter in his home, so it would cut out when the credit ran out, forcing him to write by candlelight. Um, <laughs> um, Sister Bliss um, stated that the track's music was written in uh, bandmate Rolo's recording studio, which was a garden shed at the end of his garden, obviously. Mm -hmm. And she came up with the song title as she was unable to sleep because she was working in the studio during the day and she was DJing at night. And she said it was like having permanent jet lag. And she described, like you said, that when she came back from working, it's very hard to get downtime and come back down to a position yeah. where you're able to you know, go to sleep. That so, was um, I, I used to bartend and that was always what happened. I could get off at three o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't fall asleep till 5.30 or 6 because you just have to come yeah. down. Yeah. Um, she said that the... Um, Placing the main keyboard riff towards the end of the song was an idea we got from Underworld's way of um, Underworld's a band that did both Slippy and loads of other stuff dance wise. It was their way of building tension, just waiting, 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 then back. Um, she wrote the riff after Rollo asked her to do some big strings. Um, and she borrowed the idea of shifting from a major chord to a minor chord from Donna Summer's I Feel Love. Oh, there you go. We are. Um, so here are the lyrics. Um, and I actually, I, I love the way it delivers this, but, you know, I'm more familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, I only smoke weed when I need to, and I need to get some rest. Yo, where's the cess? I confess, I burned a hole in the mattress. Yes, yes, it was me. I plead guilty. And at the count of three, I pull back the duvet. I make my way to the refrigerator, one dry potato inside, no lie, not even bread. Jam, when the light goes above my head, went bam. And of course, it goes to the symbol at that point. I can't sleep, something's all over me, greasy. Insomnia, please release me and let me dream about making mad love on the heat, tearing tights off with my teeth. Mm -hmm. But there's no relief. I'm wide awake in my kitchen. It's black and I'm lonely. Oh, if only. I could get some sleep. Creaky noises make my skin creep. I need to get some sleep. I can't get no sleep. Do, 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 do. I put my notes. Keyboard anthem. Do, do, do. I can't get no sleep. Do, 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 do. Can't get no sleep. I can't get no sleep. Full band kicking. Do, 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 do. Can't get no sleep. Can't get no sleep. And off you go. So you go. So yeah, they were one of the pioneers of what you would call like stadium dance music as opposed mm. to club. They yeah. would play the big ones. They headlined some of the biggest festivals in the world, including there on the Pyramid stage at Glastonbury in 2002. So, yeah, big deal. They were nominated for Best UK Dance Act at the Brit Awards in 99 and 2002. Um, the band actually split in 2011, um, but they returned to release a new uh, studio album almost a decade later in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. But they weren't brought, uh, joined by Max Jazz, because he'd formed another band during the hiatus called Maxi Jazz and the E-Type Boys. Um, speaking of which, his real name is Maxwell Alexander Fraser. And he died peacefully in his sleep at his home in South London after a long illness mm. on the 23rd of December 2022 at the age of 65. Um, the band shared this tribute online. He was a man who changed our lives in so many ways. He gave proper meaning and message to our music. He was also a lovely human being with time for everyone and a wisdom as well as profound and accessible. It was an honour and, of course, a true pleasure to work with him. He's a brilliant lyricist, a DJ, a Buddhist, magnificent stage presence, car lover, endless talker, beautiful person, moral compass and genius. Mm. Um, yeah, just to one side, he had lots of different passions. I've seen some clips when I was doing research for this of other sort of performances uh, God is a DJ is another sort of track that was really well known by them and his presence on the stage there and the way he was talking to the audience and talking about love and peace without sounding all hippie shit it was just, it was really actually touching yeah. the way he sort of drew everybody in, really cool he had a fondness for cars as well and he set up his own sort of like um, sort of a racing company and he even had a massive crash and hurt himself. And yeah, he had all sorts of little interests. But in, so in, in May 2023, 
the Homesdale Fanatics, who are a supporter group for his football club, Crystal Palace, they supported, they veiled their tribute to Jazz with a full stand TIFO. That's the tiled display. You know, every member holds up a little mm. tile and it shows a big picture. So it's a full stand TIFO display of his face. The largest ever seen in English football, alongside the lyrics from God is a DJ. And it read, this is our church. This is where we heal our hurts, which is the sort of chorus of that song, uh -huh. um, which is really cool. So Faith is his eighth studio album. Champion Sound is due to be released later this year. They've already released two singles in July and August. Um, in April 24 this year, Faith has stated, Maxi died just over a year ago, and obviously we miss him every day. Thank you for all your kind words of support over the last year. It has really, really meant a lot. In the meantime, we've never stopped, brackets, couldn't stop, never wanted to stop, in brackets, making music. Even during Max's long illness, we recorded and released All Bless. And now finally, eight years after our live performance, we are returning to festival stages. So they will be out mm. about later in the year, which is cool. As I say, I'm not like a big fan of them. Um, it's not particularly my music. But I do think this is a sort of anthemic sort of dance song and the way this performs with the, you know, the traditional instruments just gives it a really sort of all-encompassing sound. I think it's really cool. Yeah. So there you go. Something a bit different for the channel as well. Oh, of course. Of course. Well, it was a nice yeah, change yeah. of pace. I really enjoyed it, man. And this cool. the, was, he, it sounds like a, an amazing fella too. I mean, that's yeah, just yeah. a really, really interesting story. Uh, and, and, it's a shame when someone who's that pure as a and hu as a human it has to leave um, a bit early, you know. Yeah, I didn't write this down, but they did lots of work with charities, particularly homeless uh, charities as well. They got into sort of social political movements as well, championing different causes, some refugee stuff as well. So yeah, they're all around sort of good guys, uh, yeah. so, you know, which is nice. Um, so yeah, just an interesting one. And um, well, I'll wrap things up. So thanks mm -hmm. for listening to this. Thank Folks you. out there, tell us what you think. Have you ever suffered from insomnia? Um, I don't want to know about, just about ripping off the tights and all that. Keep that to yourself. But yeah, please drop some comments. Um, tell us what you think about this track, this performance, uh, this band, um, and anything else that comes into your head, as quite often does. Um, <laughs> if you like this, do hit the like button. It really does help in shoving it forward into everybody else is um uh earways and airways. Um if you haven't subscribed already, please do and help support this channel. Um and uh it help us build onwards and upwards. We do really appreciate everybody who does support the yeah. channel, so thank you. Um that being said, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see all of you on the next episode of the audio files. See you later, guys.